channel. My name is Brienne Beebe. I teach high school geometry. I'm currently in my eighth year and today I'm talking about teaching proofs. I'm not here to say that I found the perfect solution that will work for you and all of your students, but I am here today to share what I've done in the past and why so that you have other ideas and perspectives to consider and reflect on as you decide what to do for you and your students. And just as I'm sitting down to film this, I remember that I did teach proofs a little bit before I started teaching during my student teaching assignment when I started with the class that I was assigned to they were finishing up their proofs unit so I had seen proofs before thankfully because I actually don't remember learning them when I was in high school I really don't remember encountering them until I was in college and our geometry professor just kind of sat us down and told us okay so write some proofs about these things no idea what I was doing had to learn the hard way Luckily I learned fast, but after having that experience, I find it difficult to teach proofs to students myself because I don't really have a model of how to teach them. So my first year of teaching geometry, I followed what was in the textbook and the textbook had proofs split up with lines and angles, with congruent triangles, with parallelograms, and with similar triangles. So I followed along with that hated it. My students hated it. It was a miserable experience and really it could have just been that I was a first year teacher and inexperienced. So I don't know, but after that first year I decided to push proofs off as long as I could. So what I did was I taught the introductory geometry stuff with lines and angles, but without proofs. He's okay. And then we uh, did transformations unit. And then our next unit was congruent triangles where we would do proofs with algebra, lines and angles, and then finally the triangles. So I did that from my second year through my sixth year and results were hit and miss. Some students did just fine and other students did not. And I just see proofs as being something very difficult for students because it's so completely different from anything else that they ever encounter in math before or after. What I noticed was that once we finished with proofs and we moved on to our next unit, which was always on quadrilaterals, students were so defeated and I really thought it must be the proofs. The proofs are really bringing them down and they just, they lose all their confidence when we have to go through proofs. So what I decided to do for my seventh year was take all of the proofs and put them at the end of the course. So proofs became my ninth unit. The only unit that followed that was constructions. So that was just last year that I tried that. Overall, I really liked saving proofs for the end. The thing with proofs is that because it is so new and different for students, they really need a lot, a lot, a lot of practice to feel confident on proofs. The problem is if we do spend a lot of time doing lots and lots and lots of practice, I end up losing time for other topics in the course. So saving it for the end kind of allowed me to gauge how much time is really worth to spend on the proofs because it's kind of hard to gauge that in November. In April and May, it's a little bit different because all we had after proofs was constructions and review for our final exam. What I did not like about saving proofs for the end was that we had to do everything at once. So we did proofs algebraically and lines and angles and congruent triangles and similar triangles and parallelograms all at once. Which meant that throughout the course it felt like some things were missing. And when we talked about different theorems, I couldn't really go in and show them the proof of it or talk about the proof or develop the proof. So all of those just kind of fell by the wayside. I didn't even get to them because we did proofs at the end of the year. So last year, my students did better with proofs than ever before, but the thing is, I don't know if it's because I saved them until the end, or because the students that I had last year were all accelerated ninth grade, except for about four students that I had. So I don't know, maybe it was saving it till the end was for the best, or maybe I had a class of really quick learners and that really could have been it too. I don't know. So naturally it would have made sense for me to go along and try again this year now that I do have a mixed group of 11th and 9th grade taking geometry, which is a whole different story. Um, but as I was thinking about it over the summer, I decided that I wanted to do things differently again this year. So our very first topic was algebraic proofs. So we had our few days of bonding and talking about 
expectations and procedures at the back to school and then we did a pretest and then our very first lesson was algebraic proofs so students got to see proofs from the very beginning at the end of our lines and angles unit we did proofs there so i started with algebraic line and angle proofs and then we did just line and angle proofs without any real algebra in there and for those i did fill in the blank proofs just so that students could kind of practice some more without it being too crazy or intimidating i also made the decision not to put any actual like line or angle proof questions on our test and then just as a side note for my tests i use old regions questions there really aren't any line and angle proof type regions questions anyway after our lines and angles unit we completed a transformations unit and that leads us right into the current unit which I've just dubbed triangles because I am also incorporating triangle properties that are going to be making a comeback as we change standards again. So I'm going to show what I have in my notebook for this unit. We use interactive notebooks. So after the transformations, we talk about how figures are congruent before and after, and we spend some time talking about corresponding parts. With the transformations so we continue that here i don't really know how well this is going to show up my viewfinder it's kind of hard to tell if you can really see anything here or not but we talk about corresponding parts students work on identifying them writing congruent statements and then in the same class because they get the hang of that really quick and easy we start looking at different triangle diagrams and students have to basically interpret a given to figure out which pieces of the triangles are congruent and we write the congruent statements and then in parentheses we put the reasons why so they're kind of doing small proofs without actually knowing it when we do this lesson then we go on to our triangle congruence postulates and theorems so i have a foldable for this and they have the different postulates like side 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 we have what it is here and then on the inside they have practice with looking at triangles and trying to figure out if they're congruent if they are which postulate or theorem proves it and then actually i have task cards that i like to use i will link them down below i forget what seller they're from but i really like them they are good they're challenging there's 24 of them and this year we did those after notes but we only had about 10-ish minutes so we continued them in our next class after that, we add to our notes a cheat sheet for interpreting givens. So here I have reflexive property, midpoint, and segment bisector included for ways to find congruent sides. And then for angles, I have vertical angles, angle bisectors, perpendicular lines, and parallel lines. In the congruent triangles proofs, I really just emphasize alternate interior angles, and then we'll see corresponding angles and alternate exterior angles used for our similar triangle proofs. So after they have their cheat sheet in their notebook for the givens, we move on to actually doing some congruent triangle proofs. I only have three examples that we do in our notes, but we do these together and then the next day in class we do practice. And I give them like a packet that has eight proofs in it and then I put cards down at their table so there's hints for each proof. And what they get is the proof of the given and then Maybe I'll break down some parts of the given that they might have trouble with and have them fill in the reasons and how to end the proof. Sometimes I'll put part of a reason, like it'll be definition of blank, so they have to fill in the blanks. And this one shows that actually. And so they'll do this in class. It might take one or two days. It really depends on the class. But I love doing this because the way that I implement using the cards is take the packet, try to do the proof on your own, and then if you get stuck, use the hints. If you're still stuck, you have the Givens cheat sheet in your notes, and actually what they don't know is that the uh, corresponding parts practice that I gave them on the first day, these here, these are actually the proofs that I use. So they kind of already have it in their notes, but they don't, they don't quite realize that. So I'll link the proof cards down below. I just love using them because in the past, what seems to be the like standard activity to practice proofs is giving students the statements and reasons on little paper cutouts and have them 
basically arrange them and match them up and put them in order but that doesn't really help them with anything and I think that would be a good activity to do with, with like the lines and angles at the beginning of learning proofs but not when you get to the congruent triangles they need to start coming up with these things on their own and having the statements and reasons all cut apart on paper that doesn't help them come up with anything they're just putting them in order so I like how when I have my proof cards it doesn't give them everything it gives them enough that if they're stuck they can still go on but they still have to come up with how are the triangles congruent there's always at least one other step missing on these so I just really like these they're also scaffolded so the first proof gives them a little bit more information and as they go through there's less and less information on the cards plus the proofs get a little bit more difficult so there's more steps on them as well then we move on to CPCTC proofs for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent I cannot tell you how many times I get asked what that stands for it's a little bit aggravating because it's literally right there in their notes. Um, two ways that students could remember it, devices that other students have made up in the past was concentrated people come to conclusions, which is my personal favorite because that's exactly what proofs are. The other one that's just easier to remember is country people cut the corn. So students made those up, not me, and I've shared them every year and they're actually memorable, I guess. So we do the proofs, we do cards with CPC, TC, and this year I'm stopping proofs formally there and now we're going on to triangle properties. So we're doing things like the interior and exterior angle theorems, triangle inequality theorem, and isosceles and equilateral triangles. But now I'm able to add the proofs for these things in the notes. I'm sorry, there's probably so much extra paper noise, but my pages are actually stuck together. So I was able to go over this proof with my students when we learned about the triangle sum theorem. And I feel like I like this better because I can have these proofs in there. They're fill in the blank. Students are able to work on them or maybe we work on them together if you know they're a little bit forgetful. But so far I like how it's going. Parallelograms will be the next time that we encounter proofs. So that's going to be in our next unit. We'll have similar triangles. I didn't even talk about coordinate geometry proofs, which are my personal favorite, but they are just right in the coordinate geometry unit. I don't even like to categorize them with the regular proofs because students will take their T-chart and try to do statements and reasons with them, which is so frustrating. The other thing that I find frustrating about proofs is I feel like I'm forced into having to teach students about the two column format and what I really love is the flow chart. So in our congruent triangles notes, we do an example together and then underneath I have what that would look like as a paragraph proof and then in the example after that underneath the two column proof I have what it looks like as a flow chart proof. And I encourage them and say, you know, if you're really strong in ELA, you might prefer the paragraph proof. If you're really strong in art, you might prefer the flowchart proof. And I mentioned that students in the past have found success with them and preferred them to the two column proofs. But at that point, students are comfortable with the two column format, so they usually stick with that. So I feel like that's everything that I have to say on the topic of teaching proofs, but if you would please comment below if you're a geometry teacher and you do anything similar or anything different. I, like I said, just want to share perspectives and ideas for anyone that's struggling with this and wants to hear more and have more ideas to reflect on. So go ahead and check out the comments below because I'm sure there's some gold in there. So that's everything for this video and as always, thanks for watching.